part three of our conversation with Edmonton radio legend Len Tucson. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. As I mentioned off the top part one of this series that I contacted Len Tucson, my first boss, and I said, Len, I'm not doing this series unless I talk to you first. Recently, Len was just awarded and celebrated for his 40-year career in Edmonton, and it's been an amazing, successful career. So it seems fitting. When I saw that, I went, I better get this series out. And I should point out, we're also talking to Jeff Woods and Chuck McCoy. I just wanted to track down a handful of broadcasters. I mean, there's lots that I respect, but just a few that I really wanted to talk to. I started in major market thanks to Len Tucson. I remember getting off the air that very first night being very, very cocky, thinking I had really done a great job for whatever reason. I don't know why, because I still have the tape. And man, I suck canal water. I can't even listen to it. I was so bad. And from that moment on, I thought I better listen to this guy. I better learn. I better be humble. I'm working with top radio guys at this radio station. I don't, I didn't even know how to splice tape because I started in major market. I didn't cut my teeth in a small market, but Len gave me a chance. That's why we start the series with Len Tucson. Part three. Moments in radio for you. Every moment. Every moment. I mean, I couldn't wait to get up at 10 to 4 in the morning to do a morning show. I couldn't. I, and there's never a time where I went, oh, I got to do a show. It was like, oh, boy, this is great. I can't believe it. You know how it is. And when you get off, you're tired. You're tired because you put everything into it. Um, I guess the CRTC was the only thing that ever ruined my day. <laughs> that was it. I, I could never understand how could government govern art? Yeah. How can they do this? They don't know. But I mean, uh, having done the morning show and been a program director, I, I swear to God, at, at 10 o'clock, I was, I was pretty much done. And they let me go home at 1 o'clock. My GM did. Uh, and then you were doing the top 40, the top, the year, the, 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 the countdown. How did you, where did you, I mean, I know we were all younger back then, but where did you, I mean, did you just like it that much? I loved it that much. I just loved it. I used to love, uh, before I went on holidays, I had to do two weeks of show, music yeah. programming for all the shows because nobody else was doing it. I'd come home and do it for hours at night, go to bed, get ahead, get ahead, get ahead. And um, no, I never, I just, I couldn't believe that I could have a career like this. Yeah. Really. You look, you look at people today, it's hard for kids to find what they're going to do. There's under, so many choices. You and I knew what we wanted to do. And it's turned out really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chuck Chandler, how long did you work with Chuck? Oh, God. He actually came over when I was at the Bear and worked CFRN. I worked for nine years at Ched with him. He taught me a lot. He was good, but he was too much of a star for me out in the public. Um, but he was he was a real top 40 disc jockey. Yeah, I remember when I met him. I think I only met him once. And I remember, <laughs> I, I remember going, all the thoughts I would have had before of meeting a radio announcer, he was all those things. <laughs> Pretty much. He was bigger than life. He was larger than life. Right? You know, at the bed and with John Lennon and stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's the, something uh, else. So who were some of the other guys that that um, that you worked with through the years? Like the big guys, we're talking the big guns that you uh, that you well, look for, back and you go, pretty glad I worked with those guys. For me, it was uh, uh, Bob McCord. He taught me a lot. He taught me a lot about timing and and and, and I wasn't a humorist, but. I could get what he was doing. I couldn't do voices. That's all right. Uh, Wes Montgomery taught me that you don't have to sleep. You can just do your radio show and go party. Um, he was a great guy. <laughs> um, and there was others. There's Keith James, Chuck. There's a whole group of us there during those that time that were really solid, right? We uh, always hung out together. We were never home. That's why it was a good thing I wasn't married at the time. It wouldn't have worked. But I look back and I'm going, you can always tell the guys who were communicating, and you were that at Ched, the, the core guys. There's always the core guys, and then there's the other guys. It's not, it's not like, unlike high school, but not. But when you're an adult, it's a, it's a little tamer because we're adults. Yep. But yep. There, you were one of those core guys because when people talk about Ched, they talk about you. Yep. And that's got to be gratifying for you. It was very, it, it, it has been. It, you know, if I had to leave this planet, I'd just say I've been the luckiest guy to have lived a life like this. Yeah.
Len, I want to thank you. You've always been incredibly supportive of my new career on YouTube. This is a new channel. It's just starting out, but we have another channel called Rock History Music, which has 40,000 subscribers and is doing really well. We talk to a lot of rock stars. But it all started with Len giving me a chance because I was ready to give up, as I mentioned before in this series, when he finally said, John, what are you doing for the summer? So thanks, Len. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.